What is going on everyone? It's Ben from YGO from Zero back with another Retro Yu-Gi-Oh! Format video. And in this video, I'll be diving into the results of the latest Treasure Format tournament, which I think is honestly the only Treasure Format tournament that's been held that I know of. So it's very exciting to see which decks won, which decks didn't do as well as expected, and what everyone brought. But before diving into all of that, if you're not already subscribed to the channel, please do subscribe. We're trying to hit 500 subscribers by the end of March, and we're only about 15 away. So, you know, if you're not already subscribed and you enjoy my content, please do subscribe. Also, as a note, after this video, I will be going on a short vacation out of the country, so I won't be uploading regular videos like I normally do. But I do have a bunch of short content prepared for that, so that will be going up while I'm gone. So, look forward to that. But if you want to know when I start reposting videos again, it should be around the start of April. And if you want to be notified as to when those videos come out, subscribing is the best way to do that. Also, if you want to play any of the formats that I cover in these videos for yourself, then we have a Discord server now. Link will be in the descriptions down below. It's a great place to find games in these often underplayed formats. And also, if you want to see the tournament results that I'll be displaying today, then this is where to find them. Also, for any future tournaments, they'll be held in the Discord as well. So definitely join if you're interested in playing in any of these in the future. And lastly, as always, if you do enjoy the video, please do leave a like down below. It really helps out the channel a lot. But with that all the way, let's talk about this Treasure Format tournament. So it wasn't the biggest tournament in the world. You know, honestly, I didn't expect it to be given that I'm still a relatively small creator in this field. But we actually got a decent turnout. So... Uh, there were about, like, 13 players, and I think that's pretty good. You know, I think it's enough to, like, show off a diversity of decks and see which decks are largely the better ones. Now, of course, this field of 13 was largely dominated by people playing good stuff, of course, with their own spins on it. But, you know, that's the most popular deck in the format for a reason. It's what I think to be one of the best decks in the format, and so it makes sense that half the field took it in. But over half the tournament also played decks that are not good stuff, which is really cool to see. You know, there were two people on Clown Control, which I think is a majorly underexplored deck in the format. And I think does have the potential to potentially be Tier 1 in the future, which I know is surprising to say, but I played a fair amount of matches with the deck, and I've done pretty well with it. So I think that with more people playing it and testing it out, it could potentially get better in the future. There were two Burn players, and I think Burn is one of the best decks in the format. And I think the results of this tournament did sort of bear that out, as we'll discuss the winner of the tournament later, but they were on a burn deck. And lastly, we have some people that are just sort of doing their own thing. We had one person on like a Dark Elf Megamorph deck. The idea of that is you play like big beaters that can cut down your life points, so that way you can go for a big OTK push with Megamorph later. Uh, we also had a Recruiter Control player, which is a deck that, you know, I didn't really cover in my coverage of this format. It's very interesting. It's an interesting take on the format as recruiters are very powerful. And so playing more of them and playing some interesting targets for them can be pretty good. So they were playing some tomatoes, some giant rats. And while Clown Control also does that, they weren't actually playing like Dream Clown in the main deck. I think they had the Clown Control package in the sideboard to bring in, but they were playing things like Nimble Mamanga and Muka Muka instead, which I think is a really cool innovation. Very interesting. Uh, I hope that people experiment with this more in the future. If it actually does become its own sort of like deck category, then I'll be happy to cover it in the future. But really cool to see some experimentation coming up with a deck that I didn't actually feature on the channel. And lastly, there's one Mill player as well. Kind of breaks my heart. Mill is one of my favorite pet decks in the format, even though I know how degenerate is. But, I, you know, it didn't really do as well, which makes sense with only one player in the tournament. But maybe in the future, if more people bring it and, like, tinker with it more, it will see tournament success in the future. I still think it is a Tier 1 deck. However, the stall deck that is undoubtedly in Tier 1 is Burn. So, that brings me to the winner of the tournament, which was, in fact, me. Uh, I played in the tournament because I thought it would be fun, and I brought Burn because I felt like not many people would bring this deck and I wanted to actually see if it did deserve its Tier 1 status. And I won the tournament, so I think that it really does. I went undefeated for a large section of the tournament, only losing one game in the finals. And since it was double elimination, I was able to win the second match. If you want to watch those matches, I think they were really intense and really, really cool. 
and I have my live commentary for them on the channel. So definitely check that video out. A link will be both in the description and also it should have popped up on the screen when I started talking about this as well. So you can click either of those. But awesome games. And I was facing Declan, who was on Good Stuff. Very great duelist. Very well played. You know, these were just so intense. But even though Burn is a bit iffy in some regards, it was good enough to take the day. And that's what matters. So I featured basically what this Burn deck is on the channel before. I think that I may have made some slight changes to the side deck. Uh, oh, I think I also added a Cyber Jar in the main deck as I realized that this card can be very good at stopping an aggressive pressure on your opponent's behalf and also drawing you deeper into your deck to get to things like Chain Energy and Toll easier. But this deck performed extremely well for me. You know, maybe that's just because people are less familiar with the burn matchup. And so some people played more heavily into things like Chain Energy, taking more life points than they honestly had to. But I think overall, the deck is just extremely strong. And if you don't play into the chain energy, then you're just giving your opponent time to kill you through other ways. So it's sort of like a damned if you do, damned if you don't situation with that. And I think that just having that at its disposal is incredibly powerful. Also, things like Just Desserts, just being able to win the game out of nowhere is incredibly powerful. Being able to crash things like Giant Germ into your opponent's monsters and gain back life points with normal manga, and then tribute off whatever you bring out with a cannon soldier is just incredibly powerful as well. I do have some complaints with the deck. I think maybe the three true nades in the main are not really worth it, as I did find the card was dead more often than not, and I would have liked to see pretty much anything else there instead. And I also think Toll is a bit iffy. I did deal a fair amount of damage with it, but it's much more easy to play around than something like Chain Energy. So it's kind of an iffy inclusion. It does slow the game down a bit more, but I think it's a lot easier to get around and just not really as good as I'd like it to be. But these are just my thoughts on the deck going forward. I think that there are a lot of things you can change. My build is definitely not perfect, but it was good enough to win the tournament. And I think that's a testament to how good Burn is. So I hope this deck sees more experimentation in the future. But since I've already covered Burn in such detail on the channel before, I want to talk about the second place Good Stuff deck now, because I do think that Declan's build here actually does some innovative things. The big one is playing the Banisher of the Light in the main deck. Now, I do have a video on Banisher of the Light and how building a sort of deck around it as a dedicated strategy is not the best, but I do think that playing Banisher in a Good Stuff deck as a defender can be incredibly strong. And it can be very unexpected. You know, the Recruiters, Witch, and Sangan are just such a big part of this format that if you can cut your opponent off of them, it can just really make their deck dead in the water. And you can cut off their access to monsters pretty convincingly. In one of the games that I played against Declan, Banisher straight out won them the game. Uh, so I think the card is very good. And I hope it sees more experimentation in the future. I think probably its place is as like a one-off copy in a good stuff deck, but only time will tell. Another thing that I want to point out here is the two Flash Assailants in the side deck. Flash Assailants is a really interesting card. I know a lot of people have been experimenting with it a lot. I didn't actually show it off in any of my videos because I'm kind of iffy on it myself. It can beat out a Mechanical Chaser in some situations, but... I feel like those situations are kind of hard to engineer. And if you want to go for a more gimmicky strategy with it, with something like Reverse Trap, it just feels too gimmicky for me and too unlikely to work. But, you know, Flash of Salem does have some other applications, and Declan did show those off. For instance, in one of our games, they actually maneuvered Flash of Salem's attack to be 1,200 exactly, and then attacked into what they suspected was a Witch of the Black Forest, enabling them to keep it on field and prevent me from getting a search. Which I think is really neat, especially when you do have Banisher of Light in the deck as well, to potentially punish that Witch play later on. So, I'm glad to see it getting more experimentation, and I think it is pretty cool, so I hope to see more experimentation with it in the future. And I hope to be proven wrong about the card's viability. Other than that, I want to point out the Mass Sorcerer in the main deck. I know this is sort of like an optional inclusion in a lot of good stuff decks, but I think it did really come in clutch for Declan here. So, cool to see that there. It can be fetched off a Mystic Tomato, which is very nice. And just being able to get in for 900 and draw a card off of it, super good. Uh, other things to note, there are two Solemn Judgments here. Solemn, I think, is a very good card in this format as well. 
I experimented a bit with Magic Jammer in the early days of the format because I figured, like, if you've got three hand rips, then Magic Jammer trades for those, like, reasonably well. But Solemn is probably just the better option if you're going for counter traps. And deck space in these lists are kind of tight, so it makes sense that the Solemn is in here. Going up against a burn deck, Solemn could be a lot worse, but I think in general it's probably good to have, at least in the side deck, to bring in if you're not up against burn. But I think that this list is pretty tight. So, very awesome showing by Declan, very cool innovation, and I'm just really happy with how this tournament turned out. There's not too much more to say on this tournament, uh, just that it was like a very fun time. We did have some hiccups as this was the first tournament that we were running, but I think overall it ran pretty smoothly, and I'm looking forward to the next one as I am planning on throwing more of these tournaments in the future. Also, I really think that this like reinvigorated interest in treasure format and I think that's awesome to see, as I think the format is really cool, uh, and is very distinct from the other formats that are around it. Like, I think Critter is very much its own thing, and probably a bit more strategic. And Imperial is just sort of like a sign of things to come, with like one sort of good stuff deck really dominating. But I think Treasure is at a point where like, more jank strategies can actually do well, and there's actually a surprisingly diverse metagame. So I know it's not everyone's cup of tea, but I do encourage you to try it out if you haven't already. I think you might be pleasantly surprised. But let me know what you think about these results down in the comments below and what you think about treasure format in general. I always love chatting with y'all and seeing what your opinions are, so definitely let me know what you think. But until next time, I've been Ben from YGO From Zero, and I'm signing off.